Government is not reason. Government is not eloquence. Government is force. And like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Daniel Hapney, and this is The Real Story. Tonight, I've got a really fast episode. When I say fast, almost a clip episode. But I've got a, re I got a good title. Here's a thought for you. It's called The American Economic Coup, like a coup d'etat. What you're going to learn tonight, anyway, is not only did, gee, our banksters get into our government and stuff, okay, but you'll find out they were globalist banksters. And they're doing things now, like stealing from you. I think the going rate is $23.7 trillion. That's what uh, Reuters is reporting with, you know, in, uh, you know, Associated Press. But a couple thoughts for today, and that is, when I say globalist banksters, I don't mean they're just globalist banksters. They're also eugenicists. Here, show them a picture. We got a new science czar. Obama's appointed. His name's Holdren. Dr. what? John Holdren. Well, he wrote a book back in the 70s with a pair of Ehrlichs, a husband and wife pair. But you should understand, when you read this and stuff, it's all about eugenists. It's about deciding who can have children and who can't about controlling and, and sterilizing the populace. And, uh, you know, just a whole control of society thing. He's your new science czar. So anyway, we're back to banksters, okay? Why banksters? Because think about it. When, let's see, remember all the bailouts? Gee, you remember all that stuff? Remember, gee, we got rid of Lehman? Remember Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac? Barney Frank, don't forget him, you know? That's where we, let's say, borrow some money from the Federal Reserve, a private banking cartel. But we don't just get money, we have to pay them interest. That's right. What do they do with the money? They give it to banks, so the banks can do what? Can loan it to us so we can pay what? More money, interest. So we pay interest twice on all that money created. So your grandchildren are going to be taxed into servitude so that you can pay what? Interest to a bank f with money that you had to pay interest to create. Do you understand how you're being ripped off by a private banking cartel? Okay, that aren't even American bank owned, you know, this Federal Reserve Bank. Remember, it's private, it's not public, and it's not part of the federal government, like Federal Express. Federal Express isn't. So anyway, here's what I got. So you understand you're paying interest twice. What I thought was interesting was, you know, as we go through time, we learn more and more. Rolling Stone just came out with a great article called The Great American Bubble Machine. Here, let me introduce you to a Rolling Stone author, okay, who I recommend you get that article, okay, and he'll tell you a little bit about how laws were changed and how Goldman Sachs was able to steal from you. Now remember, Goldman Sachs and, you know, J.P. Morgan were actually changed to bank holding companies right at that first, you know, stimulus bank bailout thing. Now they're all getting bonuses from you. So play that one. Hi, my name is Matt Taibbi. I'm a reporter for Rolling Stone magazine, and I'm here to talk about the story behind my story in this month's issue, The Great American Bubble Machine. In the story, we focus on six bubbles, but we're primarily focusing on three uh, bubbles that happened in the last two decades. There was the internet bubble, uh, the housing slash credit bubble that everybody knows about, and there's a third one that most people don't really know a whole lot about, and that's the, the commodities bubble. And that's when gas prices shot up to over four dollars a gallon. It had absolutely nothing to do with supply and demand. Supply was actually up worldwide. Demand was uh, rising at a slower rate than, than supply, and it was banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley that were primarily responsible for that. Actually, last summer, every barrel of oil was traded 27 times before it was actually delivered to a customer that consumed it. And what's important to understand about this is that it shows pretty much everybody is affected by the behavior of banks like Goldman Sachs. One of the things that's a recurring theme in this story is that Goldman and banks like Goldman they're expert at going after these sh big pools uh, of investor capital. And what they do is they get these large institutional investors. You know, they had them investing in the internet, mortgage-backed securities. And they're also uh, the biggest consumers of uh, commodities futures, of oil futures. The big scam here is that they, they found ways to take a whole bunch of crap, right? Uh, slap it with a AAA rating and sell it to a bunch of big institutional investors. The important thing to remember is that when they designed this market to trade commodities, and it's not just oil, but any commodity, that's corn, wheat, natural gas, there was a law that was 
passed in the 30s, the uh, Commodity Futures Exchange Act. Back then, people understood that if there were too many speculators in the market, that speculators would begin to affect prices artificially. So they uh, placed limits on how many speculators there could be on the market. What happened in the last two decades is that banks like Goldman Sachs very quietly and more or less secretly got exemptions to this rule. They slowly began to overtake real supply and demand in the market and what happened last summer is we sort of reached the point where the speculators dominated the market and that's why prices now have uh, very little to do with real supply and demand as a result of that change. So you see that sometimes it's not fair, is it? Gee, they got unfair rules. They're able to what? Sell empty boxes to people, but yet charge you. And they're, they're able to what? Run up, I guess it was a dollar of every gallon of gas you paid last summer went directly to Goldman Sachs. And they don't produce petroleum. They don't refine petroleum. And they don't distribute petroleum. Rather interesting, huh? And this was all allowed because you've got to remember all of our Treasury Secretaries, Paulson, Goldman Sachs, Rubin, Goldman Sachs and Citicorp, right? Hey, Summers, remember Larry Summers? He's the guy who was the president of Harvard. He said, women can't, they're not that smart. Women can't be a scientist. Oh, you're great scientists were men. No, women, women can't do that. That's right, Lawrence Summers. So don't think it's just Obama. Because remember when I said the science advisors? You know, that guy, um, you know. Ehrlich and his wife, Paul Ehrlich, who wrote that book, you know, that our science advisor wrote, you know, the new one, Holdren. Well, Ehrlich was Papa Bush's science advisor. This is a small group, this eugenicist banker group. So anyway, here's a little piece. So you get an understanding of how Goldman Sachs has been stealing from you. I pity any fools that work there because you're the lowest form of scum. That's what I say about Goldman Sachs. So here's a little clip. This is a Paris, um, this is an interview in Paris television, okay, with Max Kaiser. And also, notice the guy who they put against him, your average globalist bankster. The other thing to notice, notice how well, or when I say how well, in, when you watch French TV, they let the two talk. Whereas in American TV, a lot of times, you know, gee, it's only the, the thing the media wants you to know they back up. Anybody else's, you know, pushed to the side. The other thing is, notice the other gentleman, how he's always got a world solution. What we need is a world bank. We've got we to involve the world. We need, you know, and what Max Kaiser points out is we already have the Bank of International Settlements. They're no different from the Fed, just another group of crooks. So catch this. This is something you should wake up and know because this is going to affect your future economic life who's an independent financial analyst and founder of KarmaBank.com, and Monsef Sheikh Ruhu, who's a professor of international finance at HEC, the Paris International Business School. Hi. Thanks so much, both of you, for, for being on the program. Max, if I could start with you. I mean, what is it about Goldman Sachs? How does he manage to, to turn the figures around like that? Well, Goldman Sachs are scum. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, they basically have co-opted the uh, U.S. government. They've co-opted the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve functionality. Uh, they've co-opted the Obama administration. Barack Obama, uh, you know, dances to Goldman Sachs' tune. And they are really crooked and abominable in what they've done. Uh, you just remember Hank Paulson held the Congress hostage, mm. took him in the back room and said, give us $700 billion. We're going to crash this market. He's an arsonist. He's, he's an outlaw. And yet, He's given You've praise. Ex Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson, who was CEO at, uh, at uh, Goldman Sachs. Sure, but if you go down the list, they're all Goldman Sachs scum. Whether it's Hank Paulson, whether it's uh, Geithner has very close ties to Goldman Sachs, and of course, all these banking uh, bonuses are paid out to all their cronies who are Goldman Sachs scum. And America, for some reason, has allowed this coup d'etat to take place—a silent coup d'etat where the Goldman Sachs and their friends now control the U.S. government, and I, they are I manipulating. Prices. Okay, okay my Monsef, that's a pretty abrasive view of Goldman Sachs. Do you go along but with that? I will revert only to the financial <laughs> world and to the financial figures. And we notice that Goldman Sachs is merely uh, uh, having the fruits of its very, very important strategic choice. Let's not forget that Goldman Sachs has warned the world community about the dangers of the uh, instruments, the toxic instruments that were being used and that were called the subprimes. And Goldman Sachs published a report a year and a half ago saying that the, gold, uh, that the subprime problem was going to cost the world $2,000 billion. So Goldman Sachs was the only investment bank in the United States that didn't get into this game well, of take selling, that, my own yeah, selling, and, <laughs> selling and, and buying empty boxes. Mm, yes, uh, but they created many of these empty boxes. They then um, bet against their own clients to whom they sold these empty boxes. They coerced the federal government to get rid of their main competitors in Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns who were selling these empty boxes. They co-opted 
with foreign banks who own these empty boxes, who went through tremendous pain and suffering. And uh, they are also now caught in front running every single trade on the New York Stock Exchange with this high frequency trading scandal. They're uh, literally stealing $100 million a day. Uh, Goldman you, Sachs is stealing every day on the floor of the exchange. They should be in The Hague. They should be uh, taken up on financial terrorism charges, and they should all be thrown in jail. They're, they're scum. I wouldn't be as